I'm working on a connector project in Creo Parametric and I realize it's an opportunity to show a whole lot of different advanced modeling techniques. And so here you see an assembly that I'm using for working on my different connectors. And I've got this wall mounted connector and a wall mount connector needs a panel cutout so that it can be placed in the model. And for that information, I found a web page from ITT Canon that shows the different dimensions whether you are doing a back panel mounting or front panel mounting and so in order to create that in my model I can sketch up my features and create an extrude but I'm going to want to use this over and over again and let me just jump back to that web page again Depending on the shell size of your connector, there are different dimensions. And so, I'm going to use something called a user-defined feature, which is a way of taking different features from, from your model and then storing them out to a file so that you can place them over and over again. And you can have a family table in the UDF for those different mounting sizes. So to create my UDF, I'm going to open up the part that has the original features. And by the way, I'm doing this in Creo Parametric 2.0 uh, simply because I want others to be able to use these files. That's why I'm not doing it in Creo Parametric 5.0 because of the lack of backwards compatibility. I'm trying to use one of the earliest versions of Creo that I have. And so for the features that I'm using, let me turn on my coordinate system display and I actually have this cutout started with what's called an on surface coordinate system if I right mouse click and hold and choose edit definition like the name implies it's a coordinate system that is located on a surface and then it's dimensioned from two perpendicular references uh, perpendicular to the mounting surface not necessarily to each other and this gives a lot of flexibility if you use it as the first feature in your user defined feature and i'll show you that when i am placing it how it makes things simpler and besides my cutout i have a sketch feature that's currently hidden and then the extrude uh, that goes through the next surface so to create a user defined feature you go to the tools menu and then choose UDF library. And this is going to open up the menu manager. The, then you will click the create command. And it asks you for a name for this UDF. And I'm going to call it panel cutout. And then hit the enter key. And then it asks you if you want this to be standalone or subordinate. Subordinate means it is dependent on whatever file in which it was created. I prefer to use standalone. In other words, there's going to be no connection between the user defined feature that's created and this particular part file. And when you choose standalone and then click done, it does ask you if you want to include a reference part. And essentially what a reference part is, it's a copy of this model that is used as a visual reference when placing the features later on. And in this case, I am going to create a reference part. And when I, after I create this, I'll show you the files that are generated. So let's click yes. And so we get the older kind of interface back from the Pro Engineer 2001 in earlier days, something called the model dialog box. And it consists of a bunch of elements and action buttons and more menu manager and I highly recommend when you are using the older style interfaces pay attention to the message area and so right now I'm being prompted to select the features I want to add to the user defined feature and so I'm just selecting them using the control key and picking them out of the model tree for simplicity and with the menu manager you basically work your way down and then back up and so I'm done selecting features then I'll click done return again and it's highlighting the front surface of the model and right now it's telling me that this surface is used by multiple references in the features that I've selected and I can write multiple prompts one for each reference if necessary or just use a single prompt and I'm fine with a single prompt so I'm going to click done return and it asks me what I want to use as the prompt for this surface and this is going to be the placement surface for my cutout 
and then it's highlighting the right side surface that I use as a dimensioning reference. Let's call this a right side surface. That's actually going to be unnecessary later on and I'll show you when I'm placing the UDF. And now it's highlighting the top surface of the model and says, hey, this is used by multiple references in the group of features. Do you want to write one prompt or multiple prompts? I'm going to do a single prompt again. I'm going to call this the top surface. And now it gives me the opportunity to review my prompts in case I mistyped something. But I think I typed everything correctly, so I'm just going to click Done Return out of here. And that's all that you need to do to define the UDF, but I want to show you a few other different things. Okay, so right now this UDF is dimensioned some distances from the top surface and the side surface, but if I want to make sure that people are able to change those later on, I can define those as variable dimensions in my UDF. And to add variable dimensions you double click on that line in the menu and then you pick the dimensions that you want to be variable using the control key and then we'll click done return and done return and so right now it's highlighting this particular dimension and it's saying hey what's the prompt that you want from the dimension value and i'm going to call this the side dimension And I might have gotten those mixed up. Let me uh, call this one the top dimension. It's actually going to be irrelevant later on, and I'll show you why. It's because I used that on surface coordinate system. Now, I have different dimensions for different shell sizes of my connectors. So I'm going to define a family table inside of here. And brings up the family table dialog box. Let's select the different dimensions that I want to use in here. And so the first dimension is going to be the size of the main diameter. And when I select this dimension over here, right now that dimension has the name D147. And I like that it gives you the opportunity to change the name of this dimension in the table right now. And I'm just going to call this the main diameter. And then for my other dimension these holes are going to change for the biggest size connector so I'll select that dimension and for that dimension the D150 dimension in my table they call it the T diameter so I'm just going to use the same name and also this dimension changes for the different panel cutouts and so they call this the R dimension so I'm just going to use that same name and those are all the dimensions that I want in here. You can even make features and parameters variable in this UDF, but I'm just going to use dimensions. So I'll click OK, and now I'm going to define my different instances. And again, we have different instances for front A, front mounted B, and so on. And rather than have you watch me type this and fill it in, I'm going to go and put a little uh, cut in the video right here. And when I come back, you'll see that this table is all filled out. All right, so the table is filled out. You'll notice that in some locations there is an asterisk. That means that it's taking the same value as the generic uh, instead of having me to fill in a value manually. All right. I've got all that data filled in. Let's click the OK button. And now we can click OK. And it tells us that the group panel cutout has been stored. And so now if I take a look in my working directory, if we go and look for that panel cutout, there we see a .gph file. And that's the name of the actual UDF. And then there's the panel cutout. It's got the same name, underscore GP. Dot PRT. That is the name of the reference part that's stored that will help me place this UDF in the model later on. What I recommend that you do is store all your UDFs in the same folder. And if you go to File, Options, Configuration Editor, there is an option called Pro Group DIR. And you can set that to the location of where you want to store your UDFs. And that way, when you go to place them, you'll be able to go right to that group directory and select them. 
Okay, let's repaint the screen. And for simplicity, I'm just going to place another one of the cutouts in this very same model. Now, although the command to create the UDF is available from the Tools menu, to place it, go to the Model tab, and in the Get Data group, there is the User Defined Feature command. And instead of going to my Group directory, that's the default location, I haven't moved mine yet, so they're still in my Working directory. And here is the panel cutout.gph. I will select it, and because I created all those different instances, here I have uh, the ability to choose between whether it's front mounted or rear mounted and whether it is going to be uh, which particular shell size. So let's say that I want to put in a D size connector that's going to be rear mounted. So now I'll click OK. And then you get the insert user to find feature dialog box with a few different choices. And here it says make features dependent on dimensions of UDF. I eh, usually don't need to check that. Advanced reference configuration allows you to place the UDF in the model with your new references. And view source model. If you check that and then click OK, here we have that panel cutout underscore gp.prt file in its own separate window, which shows us some different references. So first off, for now, we have the on-surface coordinate system. We need the references for locating it. So I'm going to locate it on this surface. And then what I like about using the on-surface coordinate system is that originally I had my sketch defined from the right side and the top side. Well, now we have our drag handles. If I want to dimension this for some reason from the bottom surface instead, I can do that. And I'm just gra grabbing and dragging the green diamond until that surface highlights. And instead of grabbing and dragging, if I end up wanting to move it a long distance, what I can do is just make sure that the offset reference uh, offset references collector is selected, hold down the control key, and then select the other reference that I want to use. And then I can adjust the location. So maybe I want this a distance of 200 from here and change this distance to a value of 80. So now I've got it located in the correct location. There are a couple other references that it needs. And so I need the placement surface for the sketch and then the top surface, which is the orientation reference. Now, when I was creating the UDF, I also had to select the right side surface uh, as a reference, but by using the on-surface coordinate system, it gives me a lot more flexibility in locating the feature. If I go to the Options tab, I have the ability to scale this by a factor if I wanted to. And also, remember I defined that there are a couple of variable dimensions in the sketch. This asks me how do I want to handle all the other dimensions that were in the group of features. And I can unlock them, which means that later on when someone goes to edit or basically edit uh, the features in the UDF, they'll be able to see all the different dimensions and change the value. If you choose lock, they'll be able to see the dimensions that aren't variable dimensions, but they won't be able to change them. And if you choose hide, they won't even be able to see any of the other dimensions that weren't defined as variable dimensions if they try to edit these features later on. And within this, you have the ability to edit definition of the features like the panel cutout sketch and the panel cutout itself. And the properties tab, this is just a place where you can change the name of the group of features that will be created. And so I will click the check mark. And if I go back to my model tree, you'll notice that I'll have a group under that name. And I can expand this and there you can see the coordinate system, the sketch and the extrude feature. And so now I can go to other files and easily place this cutout as well. I'm not going to go through that process, but I just want to show you in case I have some other part. I go to open, just like before, on the model tab, user divine feature. And they're in my working directory. I can click open and repeat the process to use these features over and over again. So... I'm going to take these files and I'm going to put them in the Dropbox on my website in case you want to use these panel cutouts in your own particular models. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.